Uh, thank you for sharing what has brought you here today and what you're wanting to cultivate for yourself. And I think that especially in the time that we're in right now, creating spaces for ourselves have become even more of an, a necessity. I see it in many places where now that we're home, there's actually opportunity to be even more exhausted, to be even more pulled from place to place, to be even more burnt out because the notion is you're home. You can do anything. You can do everything. There's no excuse. You're home. For instance, people who are working from home, there are no working hours now. It's like you're home. They can contact you at any time. Um, and same with being around family. It's like you're home. They can be around you all the time. So those natural, those natural boundaries and containers that happen from day-to-day -day living and going to work and doing different things and leaving the house, they don't just exist naturally anymore. It's something that we actually have to cultivate for ourselves and to first recognize that we need them and then start to create those habits and those, um, yeah, those containers that, that we usually just had happen naturally. Now it's, we are creating them. So I think that's wonderful that you're here creating that space for yourself and starting that practice. And, um, I think another thing that's coming up is just that like we are given this gift of time, like this time we have to slow down, this time we have to really be with, be with ourselves and whatever shows up. We're also learning to reimagine, not reimagine, but to really be with and look at our relationship with death and life. And, um, it's it's a rebirth. It's a it's an unknown time, and it's filled with tragedy, tragedy, and also it's a reconnecting to the the grid, like the plane of like living all living things. There's been such a separation from it, and now it's like we're forced to reconnect. So in that being said, today's theme that I'm feeling into is like that reconnection between the heart and the mind. Um, we've grown in a society where we keep them as two separate things, you know, what the mind says and what the heart says, two separate things. And we don't always give them both the space to be heard and seen and felt and expressed and honored for the unique perspective that each of them bring. They each are bringing us something. And it even feels reminiscent to the, the duality of masculine and feminine, you know, feeling and doing. The duality of the moon and the sun, of light and day. Sorry, light and dark, night and day, you know, yin and yang. Like they, there's two parts of it. And we've been living a separate We've been in our masculine, our, our yang, our, our energy, our, our like going out there energy. And now we're like literally being forced to, to turn inwards and to look at the darkness, to look at the death, to look at the, the regeneration, the, the, the rebirth and like the cycle. It's like it doesn't just go life and death. It's not the end. There's a continuation from that part. From after death is, is rebirth and creation and beginning. It's a continuous circle. We've only been living and holding on to the living and holding on to that part for dear life and fear of what's next and fear of transformation and fear of what lies in the dark. So today we are really, hello, Ariam, welcome. Uh, so today we are really looking at bringing in that connection now to the heart and the mind, bringing them back together bringing back the masculine and feminine together. Um, so I'd like for us to begin by sharing um, what's in your head. What's in your head? Maybe it's a thought, anything. I, I can't say what's in your head. I want you to share that. And then what's inside of your heart? So let's start there. <laughs> 